Never shall I forget that night, the first night in the camp, which has turned my life into a long night, seven times cursed and seven times sealed. Never shall I forget that smoke. Never shall I forget the little faces of the children, whose body I saw turned into wreaths of smoke beneath a silent blue sky. Never shall I forget those flames which consumed my fate forever. Never shall I forget that nocturnal silence which deprived me for all eternity of the desire to live. Never shall I forget those moments which murdered my God and my soul and turned my dreams to dust. Never shall I forget these things, even if I am condemned to live as long as God himself. Never. This was Elie Wiesel, and this is the good, the bad, and the pure evil. Born September 30th, 1928, in the Carpathian Mountains of Romania. At home, they mainly spoke y- Yiddish, but could also speak German, Hungarian, and Romanian. Elie's father, Shlomo, believed strongly in humani- humanism, and would teach this to Elie, encouraging him to learn Hebrew I read as much as possible. Ellie's mother Sarah would encourage Ellie to study the Torah. According to Ellie, his father was reason and his mother was faith. Ellie had three sisters, two older, Beatrice and Hilda, and a younger, Sipora. The older two would survive the war and find Ellie at a French orphanage. They would leave and emigrate to North America. His younger sister, mother and father would sadly die during the Holocaust. So in March 1944, Germany would take Hungary, extending the Holocaust to northern Transylvania. Just 15, Ellie and his family, along with many other Jews in the town, were placed in one or two confinement ghettos in Seagate. May 1944, orders from the Germans had many deported out switch where 90% of them were killed upon arrival. His mother and younger sister were killed first. Ellie and his father were chosen for labor duties once they remained well and strong, otherwise they would be taken to the gas chambers. They would be sent to Buchenwald. His His father was his rock. Once he was alive, Ellie knew he would stay alive. Sadly, Ellie's father would die just before the camp's liberation. In his book, Night, Ellie would speak about the shame he felt when he heard his father was beaten to death and how he was unable to help. Ellie's inmate number was A7713 and like others was tattooed on his left arm. The camp would be deliberated April 11th, 1945 by the US Third Army. After the war, Ellie was free and he was transported with a thousand other children to France, where the OSE had a rehabilitation centre. Ellie would become part of a small group of about a hundred boys who were from an orthodox home and wanted kosher facilities. They were cared for in a home under the directorship of Judith Hemmendinger. The home was in Ambol, but later would move to Taverny until 1947. After this, Ellie went to Paris. He learned French and studied literature, philosophy, and psychology at Sorbonne. At 19, he started work as a journalist. He also taught Hebrew and worked as a choir master. In 1946, he heard about the bombing of the King David Hotel in Jerusalem. He would try to join the underground Zionist movement, but was unsuccessful. In 1948, he translated articles from Hebrew into Yiddish for Egrum periodical, but never became a member of the organization. In 1949, he went to Israel as a correspondent for a French newspaper. After he was hired as a Paris correspondent for an Israel newspaper, he became its Roman international correspondent. For the first 10 years after World War II, Ellie refused to write or talk about what happened during the Holocaust. He met French author Frankish Moruk, who was a Nobel Peace Literature winner. 
During this meeting, something was said to make Ellie reconsider his silence about his experience. Francoche would, uh, and Ellie would become good friends after the meeting. Francoche would also be a strong Christian who was also part of the French resistance during the war. He would compare Ellie to Lazarus rising from the dead. Francoche would also encourage Ellie as he felt the story of Ellie's needed to be heard. Ellie fro first wrote a 900 page memoir called And the World Remains Silent. This was written in Yiddish. In 1955, he'd rewrite a shorter version called Le Nuit, which in 1960 would be translated into English titled Night. It was slow at first to gather interest, but soon he would land TV interviews for it. Popularity would grow and it would be translated into 30 languages, with 10 million copies sold in the US alone. It would catch the eye of director Orson Welles, who wanted to make it into a film, but Ali decided against it. He felt the memoir would lose the meaning if the silences between words were altered in any way. In 2006, it was even highlighted by Oprah Winfrey's book club. So in 1955, Ellie moved to New York for work. He met, fell in love and married Marion Erster Rose in 1969. Marion was from Austria. They had one son that they named Slomo, named after Ellie's father. In the US, Ellie wrote over 40 books most non-fictional Holocaust literature and novels. He was awarded many literature prizes and is considered an important person regarding the Holocaust. Some historians credited Ellie with the given the term Holocaust from his personal experience. Ellie though didn't feel the word Holocaust gave an adequate description of the historic event. In 1975, he co-founded the magazine Moment the book and play The Trial of God 1979 is said to be based on Ellie's real life Auschwitz experience. He would witness three Jews close to death conduct a trial against God. They accused God of being oppressive towards Jews. Ellie would publish two volumes of memoirs, 1994 the first All Rivers Run to the Sea, which covered his life from, 1960, from then until 1969. 1999 was the second, and it would be published and called And the Sea is Never Full. This covered from 1969 to 1999. Ellie and his wife started the Ellie Wiesel Foundation for Humanity in 1986. In 1978 to 1986, he would serve as the chairman of the President's Commission of the Holocaust. He would be a close friend to Sigmund Strawflix, a Holocaust survivor, political activist and entrepreneur. In 1982, the Israeli Foreign Ministry asked Ellie to resign from his position as the chairman of a planned international conference on the Holocaust and the Armenian Genocide. Ellie agreed and resigned. He would then work with the Foreign Ministry to get the conference cancelled or for the discussion of the Armenian Genocide removed from the conference. Ellie would provide the power ministry with internal documents about the conference and would ask those attending not to go. In 1986, Ellie was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for speaking against violence, repression and racism. The Nobel Committee described Ellie as one of the most important spiritual leaders and guides in an age when violence, repression and racism continue to characterise the world. Ellie would explain his feelings in his acceptance speech. Silence encourages the, the tormentor, never the tormented. Sometimes we must interfere. When human lives are endangered, when human dignity is in jeopardy, national borders and sensitivities become irrelevant. Ellie would receive many prizes and honors for his work, including the Congressional Gold Medal, the Presidential Medal of Freedom and the International Center in New York Award of Excellence. In 1996, he was elected to the American, to the American Academy of Arts and Letters. The magazine he co-founded, Moment, would provide a voice for American Jews. Ellie would give talks about the Holocaust regularly. 
he would become a political activist and advocated for many, including Israel, the plight of Soviet and Ethiopian Jews, Bosnian victims of genocide, and the Kurds, to just name a few. April 1999, he gave a speech in Washington, criticizing the people who chose to be indifferent while the Holocaust was happening. 2003, Ali found out and publicized that 280,000 Romanian and Ukrainian Jews, along with other groups, were massacred in the Romanian-run death camps. In 2006, Ali went with Oprah Winfield to Auschwitz, which was part of the Oprah show. November 30th, Ali was knighted in London for his work raising awareness and educating on the Holocaust in the UK. Also in 2006, he went before the UN Security Council along with actor George Clooney to bring attention to him, the humanitarian crisis in Darfur. 2007, Ellie was awarded the Dayton Literary Peace Prize Lifetime Achievement Award. Also in 2007, his Foundation for Humanity issued a letter condemning Armenian genocide denial. This letter was signed by 53 Nobel winners, including Ellie. June 2009, Ellie went with President Obama and German Chancellor Merkel to tour a Buchenwald concentration camp. The month after, Ellie announced his support to the minority Tamils in Sri Lanka. He would return to Hungary in 2009, the first time since the Holocaust. While there, he took part in a conference and met the Prime Minister. He also would make a speech to nearly 10,000 anti-racists gathering at Faith Hill. Ellie was actively trying to prevent Iran making nuclear weapons. He also condemned Hamas for using children as human shields. Ellie often emphasised the Jewish connection to Jerusalem. He would criticise the Obama administration for pressuring Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to halt East Jerusalem Israeli settlement constructions. Ellie would have a teaching position at Boston University from 76 in Humanities. The university would create the Ellie Wiesel Center for Jewish Studies in his honor. In 1982, he would go on to serve in Yale. February 2007, Ellie was attacked in San Francisco by Eric Hunt, a Holocaust denier. Ellie was uninjured, and Eric would be arrested a month later and charged with multiple offenses. Ellie died July 2nd, 2016, at his home in Manhattan, age 87. A week later, on the Senate floor, Senator Hatch would honor Ellie, saying, with Ellie's passing, we have lost a beacon of humanity and of hope. We have lost a hero of human rights and a luminary of the Holocaust literature. Thanks for listening. Next time I'll be looking at the Bhopal disaster a gas tragedy that happened December 1984. It's considered the world's worst industrial disaster. Until then, this was the good, the bad, and the pure evil.